G'day there, Paul Jones here at Trinity. Hey, last year I made a, a short series of videos called When God Asks Questions, and those videos went through five questions that God asks people in the Old Testament, questions that are still relevant for us today. And I was really encouraged by a lot of folks who found those, um, those videos to be valuable for their preaching or Bible study leadership or whatever it was. So this semester, I'll be following that up with another series from the Gospels called When Jesus Asks Questions. And there will be more than five because Jesus asks a heck of a lot of questions, hundreds of them. Um, and this first one today looks at the simple but profound question, what do you want? These will be short videos uh, followed by some study questions at the end. Our Western culture prioritises thinking, doesn't it? Thinking and intelligence are highly prized in our context, and in my opinion, too highly. We've even convinced ourselves that we are thinking things, that our capacity for thinking is the most important quality that we have. It's out of proportion. We prioritise thinking over feeling. We prioritise knowledge over mystery. We prioritise our brains over our desires. I reckon many of us have even fooled ourselves into, into believing that we are not driven by our emotions, but by our very logical, very sensible brains. Sometimes we even think that if we can change our thinking, then our behaviour will just sort itself out. How's that working out for you? <laughs> no, we are not thinking things. Um, a lot of the time we don't even understand our own behaviours. And I'll tell you this for free, reading another book won't sort you out. But hang on, don't I work in a theological college? Shouldn't I be telling you how hard you should study, how many books you need to read, how theology will change you and make you a better person? Well, there's this great little story in John's Gospel, a little snippet in the first chapter that I love. Uh, it's just four verses. Listen to this. This is John 1, 35. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched, Jesus walked by, and he exclaimed, Look, here's the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for, or what do you want? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was four o'clock in the afternoon. Now, as far as I can tell, this is the first story in the Bible about stalking. John the Baptist has some disciples. He points Jesus out to them, and they start following Jesus. And we've seen this before, haven't we? Jesus sees their reflection in his rearview mirror. He pulls over, waits for them at the lights. As they pull up beside him, Jesus rolls down his window, you guys following me? What do you want? He asks. They say, and it's a bit creepy, uh, over their sunglasses, where do you live? And Jesus, uh, as the light turns green, puts his foot down, but before he pulls away, he says to them, come and see. <laughs> it's a funny little exchange. But Jesus' question, what do you want, goes straight to the heart of things. What do you desire? What are you seeking? Notice he doesn't say, what do you know? What are you guys thinking? Hey, what book are you guys reading at the moment? No, he asks, what do you desire? And their response is honest. Their kind of creepy, where do you live, basically means we want to spend time with you, Jesus. We want to spend time with you. And they call him rabbi, implying that they accept his authority as their teacher. And so they ask where they can find him. Where can we find you? Because that's what we want. And the next thing we read is that they spent the whole day with him. Now, this little encounter we've just read is actually an invitation. It's an invitation to you. Reading the Bible is not about filling your head with information. It really isn't. Ideas are wonderful. They're exciting. They can be life-changing, but not on their own. On their own, ideas become idols. Uh, even theological ideas can distract us from the very one the very person that most of those ideas are about. So don't be afraid of stalking Jesus. In fact, I encourage you to do it often. Jesus honestly doesn't mind because you are not a thinking thing. Who you are and who you're becoming is not determined by what you know, but by what you want, what you deeply desire. 
Now I'll be posting these videos with a few discussion questions at the end, either for you on your own or with some friends. Um, but before you go, before you look at those questions and have a think on them, can I just say a quick prayer for you? Let me pray. Jesus, I thank you for noticing us and I thank you for inviting us to spend time with you. Um, I thank you for being interested in my desires. And I just want to pray right now for anyone watching this video. God, would you mend their heart, heal their desire and give shape to their wants. Amen. See you around.